Hi everyone, it's Jonathan from Smart Home Sounds here. And if you haven't heard of us before, we're a home audio retailer dedicated to finding the right speakers for you. Now today we've got the Sonos One and the newly released Amazon Echo Studio, and we're going to be comparing them both so you're able to determine which one is gonna be right for you. We do like both of these products, um, but there are some massive differences between them, so let's jump right into it. A quick disclaimer before we do, thanks to a couple of you in the comments who have asked us to mute the wake word so it doesn't cause havoc in your home, um, and that's what we will be doing in this video. So let's start off with a quick summary about each speaker then. The Sonos One is 199, uh, released in 2017, and was Sonos's first ever smart speaker. Um, it builds on the foundations of the much-loved Play One, um, whilst adding some smart features like the Amazon Google Assistant um, and AirPlay 2. Um, it's also got a refreshed appearance with touch controls on it as well. Sonos are famous for their wireless multi-room audio systems, letting you add Sonos speakers room by room so you've got a home full of music. Um, it can all be controlled in one central place being the Sonos app. The Amazon Echo Studio slightly undercuts the Sonos One at 189 and is their most premium speaker to date, following on from the Echo and the Echo Plus models. It's designed to combine um, the Amazon Voice Assistant with high fidelity sound uh, with the likes of Dolby Atmos and 3D sound built in. Both of these speakers just require mains power and connect to your Wi-Fi wirelessly, and they're set up by their own apps. Um, they are very different and we'll cover more about that later. Um, these both are home audio speakers, so they're designed to be enjoyed at home. They're not portable speakers. So let's take a closer look at each of these speakers. Straight away, the Echo Studio is quite a lot bigger than I would have thought, coming in at 20.6 centimeters high and 17.5 centimeters across. The Sonos One comes in at 16.1 centimeters high and 11.9 centimeters across. The Echo Studio is also double the weight of the Sonos One at 3.5 kilograms, uh, with the Sonos One being uh, 1.8 kilograms. The Echo Studio also looks very similar to the existing third generation Echo models with this cloth fabric that goes all the way around the circumference of the speaker. The opening here is not a CD player and it's also not a letterbox. It's actually to enable the subwoofer to push more air out and help you feel the bass more. On the Sonos One, you've got a glossy metal grille common on all Sonos speakers. Um, I personally prefer the look of this um, because it doesn't trap the dust as easily as the fabric does and I just feel that the Sonos along with the Bose and the HomePod just offer a more premium finish overall. The Sonos One also has a steam and moisture resistant grill so you can put it inside a kitchen or a bathroom and it won't damage the internal components inside, something that the Echo Studio doesn't have. So let's have a quick look at the top panel controls of each speaker. So on the Sonos One you've got controls for volume up and down, uh, play pause, and uh, skip previous, um, as well as a microphone privacy button that will cut the power electronically to the microphone. So moving on to the Echo Studio, these are actually physical buttons um, as opposed to touch controls on the Sonos, um, but you do get a volume up and down, and there are two Alexa buttons as well. So the first one is the same as if you were to say the wake word, it would then wait for your command. So if, if she's failed to hear you for whatever reason, you can press it and then you can, uh, you can give you a command. The other one is a microphone privacy button, the same one that you get with Sonos. It cuts the power to the microphones and it also illuminates, illuminates it with a nice red ring here, which I quite like. The only thing is though, is where are the play pause buttons? And there's also no way of skipping forward a track or previous track. Um, so for me, that's quite annoying. Now in terms of color choices, the Sonos One comes in a black or a white color, um, whereas the Amazon Echo Studio is supplied in this gray color only. There are also a range of accessories available for the Sonos One, so you can wall mount it, you can put it on a floor stand, or you can even put it on a desk stand. Um, whereas with the Amazon Echo Studio, uh, it has to freestand on a surface, so there's no accessories currently available for that one. So let's summarize design then. So it does come down to personal preference and it will split a lot of you. Um, but for me, if I had to choose, I would choose the Sonos One only because I prefer more of a discreet and understated uh, speaker in my home. Um, so for me, on in design only, Sonos does it for me. Now in terms of control, one of the major differences in ha is how these speakers are controlled. So with the Echo Studio, the primary uh, method of control is via Amazon voice control. Um, now this is really uh, fast and very responsive and it definitely it always hears you over loud background music. Um, you also get the full list of skills um, and it is integrated with uh, most of the popular streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Deezer and TuneIn Radio. Um, but you've also got the option of Spotify Connect. 
Um, but there, we did find there were a couple of issues with Spotify Connect, particularly when you were trying to use different Spotify accounts. So how that would work in practice, practice is if you're at home and you've got multiple people with different um, Spotify accounts, um, we found it very hard to switch between Spotify accounts on the Echo Studio. So it's great if you're using one Spotify account at all times, but if you've got mul multiple people using different Spotify accounts, we found that this didn't appear in the list. Um, so it's quite frustrating because the Echo Studio tries to be the family speaker, um, but how it works in principle, it's not quite there with, with Sonos, which lets you play um, different music in different rooms on the same Spotify account. You do also have Bluetooth with the Echo Studio, which means you can use any app from your phone and just cast it to the Echo Studio. Um, but do be aware though, this will limit your range and it will also play all the sounds from your phone as it simply mimics your device. Um, so including the ones you don't want, like your phone notifications and when you're watching a social media video, for example. Um, it also means you wouldn't be able to enjoy the 3D sound on it. So there's three ways to control the Echo Studio. The first is via your voice, the second is Spotify Connect, and then you've also got Bluetooth. Um, when they work, they, they work really well. Um, the only thing I'd say though is about Bluetooth, and it involves the app instead of it just being able to connect straight away from the Bluetooth list on your phone. Um, so you'd have to go into the app, pair a new device with it, and then it sets up that way. Um, but what it could do with is a Bluetooth button where you could just press it and it will instantly find your Bluetooth device in the menu. Um, so it's a little bit clunky in our opinion. There are of course many more ways to control the Sonos One speaker. So you've got a choice of two voice assistants, Amazon and Google Assistant. Um, you've also got AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, and you can also use their own Sonos app as well, which supports a hundred different music streaming services. So let's wrap up control then. Um, so if you're comparing both of these speakers just in terms of voice control, the Echo Studio does have the advantage because being an Amazon product, um, it does own the product, so it, it seems to work a little bit better. Um, but they both support voice control and they both support Spotify Connect. Um, where the differences lie is in the Sonos app. So personally, I love being able to browse features, uh, new albums, and, and, and essentially it's just a more intuitive experience than Bluetooth ever can be. So now for the interesting part, the sound, and this is what I'm gonna be spending the most time talking about today. So let's lift the lid on each of these speakers and see what's inside. Starting with the Sonos, you have two built-in Class D amplifiers, one to power the woofer and one to power the tweeter. You've also got six microphones built in for your voice control. So the Echo Studio has three two-inch mid-range speakers. So one points out the left, one uh, fires out from the right, and you've also got one that fires directly upwards. Um, so it's able to uh, fire sound from multiple angles, which is great for 3D sound. Um, you've also got a one inch forward facing tweeter, and you've also got a five and a quarter inch woofer for the bass. So on paper, you would expect the Echo Studio to sound a lot better than the Sonos One being a larger speaker. Um, and it definitely was louder and definitely bassier than the Sonos One. Um, but I actually preferred the listening experience on the Sonos One for the reason that it was a lot more clearer, sharper, and it just managed to separate the audio with the mid-range and the vocals and the, mid, um, and the bass a lot better than the Echo Studio. With this, it sort of all blended into one. It didn't feel like the different parts of the audio was being separated correctly. Might just be me, but that's my personal opinion. So now I'm gonna do the sound test. We're gonna start with the Echo Studio um, at about 75% volume. Anything higher is a little bit harsh. So um, let's see what you think. So the table was shaking quite a lot in that one. Um, it goes really loud, uh, really bassy. Um, the, the clarity is not all there. I don't think the separation is, very, is, is all that good, um, but it would be great for a party. It's, it's super loud. So now I'm gonna play the Sonos One. I'm gonna play the same snippet of uh, the same track that you just heard at 75% volume um, to see what you think. So for me, 
um, what was quite striking about the Sonos One was how, how much it was able to convey a clearer picture of the audio. Um, it was just much more clear and balanced and precise. And I didn't think it was just being loud for the sake of being loud. So obviously different people are going to want different things uh, in a speaker, but hopefully that has given you a flavor into how they differ from each other. Both of these speakers can be adjusted for EQ, so you can adjust the bass and the treble on both of these speakers, um, but the benefit of the Echo Studio is that you can actually um, adjust the mid-range as well, which is actually quite useful for a speaker. When we tested the 3D sound in the Echo Studio, I was actually really impressed. Um, it filled the room and it, it sounded like the sound was coming from more than just the size of the speaker, if you know what I mean. Um, Unfortunately, I can't actually play any songs uh, on the 3D playlist because they're all copyrighted and it is quite a small playlist anyway. Um, but what I can say is though, it did sound great and it ironed out a couple of the issues um, that I mentioned previously about the Echo Studio with it sounding a little bit muddy. Um, but the issue still remains with the vocal clarity. So it sounds a little bit more like this than it does this. Um, if you see what I mean. 3D sound is a great idea, and even though it's not widely supported, it's kind of the same scenario as 8K TVs. If no one ever innovates, nothing will ever move forward. Um, but what I would say is that I won't be running out to go and buy this speaker on the basis that it has 3D sound, as it's just not there yet. I also want to talk about a differentiating feature that the Echo Studio has over the Sonos One, and that is Dolby Atmos. Now, if you're not interested in knowing too much about Dolby Atmos uh, and 3D sound, then do skip ahead to the next part of the video, but I thought I'd address it for those of you who are interested in it. So Dolby Atmos is an audio codec originally intended for cinema applications. And how it differs to Dolby Digital is that it will take the individual vocals and sounds of the audio and then spread them across the sound field. Now, if I was Dolby Digital, here's an analogy for you. So if I'm a 5.1 audio system and there's sound incoming, I would take a group of that audio, put it in this bucket, and I'll take another group of that audio and put it in another bucket. So it's sort of grouping sounds. Um, with Dolby Atmos, how it works, it will take the individual parts of that audio and then spread it into the relevant channel. So what does that mean for our ears? Well, it, because the sound is gonna be more exact and precise, you'll get a more immersive sound um, and it will put you in the center of the action more than a Dolby Digital um, setup would. So because Dolby Atmos was intended for cinema applications, problems start occurring when you put Dolby Atmos in a single speaker. So when you compare the difference to a Dolby Digital speaker with a Dolby Atmos speaker, um, for example, in the Echo Studio, you're gonna to struggle to hear the differences um, because you really need at least five speakers in a cinema environment to tell the difference between Atmos and Dolby Digital. So with Dolby Atmos, you do get a little bit more height and width um, with the speaker, but what I'm trying to say is don't let Dolby Atmos and 3D sound be the sole reason you buy this over the Sonos One um, because for a start, there is not that much support in the way of Dolby Atmos and 3D sound at the moment. And also, I don't think you're gonna notice a huge difference between the sound here. For the majority of time, you'll probably be listening to it in standard uh, streaming quality anyway. So for me, I would probably base my decision around that. So moving on from Dolby Atmos, uh, both speakers are actually capable of being able to acoustically optimize for the room they're in. So they will listen to the walls and the furniture and the general layout of your room um, so, you can be, so you can be sure that you're getting the very best sound from that room. Now, um, it's, it's a little bit different in the way they operate. So on the Echo Studio, um, it is already automatic when you set the speaker up and it will tell you that it's, uh, it's automatically optimizing from the get-go. With Sonos, you do have to go through a process, like a tuning process where you walk around the room um, and that can only be done with Apple devices. Now, because this is automatic on this speaker, I'm always a little bit dubious um, about not being able to toggle it on and off like you can with Sonos, because then you can openly and honestly see the difference that the sound is making, but you can't do that with this. Both speakers are designed to fill smaller size rooms, so they're perfect for a kitchen, a um, small living area, or a bedroom, for example. Um, you might find that they get a little bit lost in large open plan areas because the sound doesn't have enough places to bounce off. Um, so I would recommend keeping these in, a, in your small to medium sized rooms. So to summarize the sound quality, um, undoubtedly the Echo Studio definitely is louder and bassier, um, but the Sonos One just is more clearer, more balanced, and it paints a clearer picture of the audio. 
Um, and that might be due to the way in which Sonos have um, Grammy award-winning music producers working for them. Overall, personally, I think Sonos offers the more complete listening experience, but I do appreciate that different people will um, prefer different things in a speaker. So for example, um, some people might prefer the vocal clarity and the balance that Sonos offers over the Echo Studio, but other people might prefer the volume and the bass that you get with this. So ultimately, I'm gonna have to keep it a draw with sound quality. Now let's touch on TV audio for a second. So you can use the Echo Studio with a TV, um, and, but you'll only be able to get Dolby Atmos out of it if you, if you have an Amazon Fire Stick 4K or an Amazon Fire Cube. Um, otherwise, it will just play in stereo. Now with the Sonos One, the, this cannot be used with a TV on its own. It has to be used as part of a, a rear stereo pair to a, um, to a Sonos TV speaker such as a Beam. As audio specialists, we probably wouldn't recommend a speaker of this shape or size uh, for your TV. Now that is for two reasons. The first reason is that it wouldn't be able to fit underneath your TV, so that means it would, you would have to uh, put it to the side of your TV, which is not a natural listening experience. The second reason is that it's always hard to get good TV audio from a single speaker. Now we'd always recommend a soundbar um, for the best TV viewing experience. Um, that is because they are built for TV, um, they have more speakers built in, and it just produces a wider soundstage. Um, now you could um, pair two Echo Studios and have one either side of your TV for a 2.0 experience, um, but for that money, you're well on your way to a Sonos Beam soundbar, which has three channels built in, with the potential to expand that up to a 5.1 Dolby Digital Surround Sound System anyway. So in essence, I wouldn't recommend either of these speakers specifically for TV audio. I'd recommend a soundbar. So that's why I'm gonna give neither of these speakers a point in that category. So let's summarize then. The Echo Studio pips the Sonos One in price by 10 pounds, but if you were spending 200 pounds on a smart speaker, I, 10 pounds probably wouldn't sway me either way. Um, so I would say that they are pretty comparable in terms of price. So let's just recap on the strengths and weaknesses of each speaker, starting with the Echo Studio. So the strengths of the Echo Studio are first, first of all, that it works great on the Echo Studio. They've really nailed the voice assistant side of things. It's seamless to use. Um, it's also, it also goes really loud and really bassy, um, and it offers a different listening experience to Sonos. On the other hand, there are a few weaknesses to highlight. Um, first of all, the audio clarity is not quite as strong as the Sonos. Um, secondly, I would also say that there have been some limitations with regards to control, which we have mentioned earlier. And finally, you are locked into the Alexa ecosystem, so you wouldn't be able to use Google Assistant or any other voice assistants with it. So what are the Sonos One's strengths? Well, it's class leading if you're looking to build a home full of uh, music. It's got multiple voice assistants built in, and it's really simple to control over Wi-Fi. Um, it also offers a more natural listening experience with better clarity and just better overall audio separation. On the other hand, the Sonos One has no line in, um, it doesn't have Dolby Atmos built in, and also it doesn't go quite as loud as the Amazon Echo Studio. So what's our verdict then? These speakers will appeal to different people. Um, I would say the Sonos does give you a bit more vocal clarity and it is closer to the way the artist intended you to listen to the, to the music. Um, whereas the Echo Studio can pump out the tunes at a lot louder volume. Um, it's got more bass, so if you're into that, if you have a lot of parties over, a lot of guests over, etc., this will be um, better for you. Um, but overall, my personal preference is the Sonos because I just prefer the clarity that you get. Um, but ultimately, I'll leave that decision up to you. So that wraps up the end of this comparison. I will pop links to both of these uh, products in the description below if you'd like to check them out. Do let us know in the comments what your preferences are. We'd love to hear from you. Um, do make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more from us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.